welcome to another segment of Bringing the Zoo to You here at Brookfield Zoo. Today we're celebrating International Women in STEM, and so we have some guests here today to talk about how they got into their career, what they like about science, and hopefully answer some questions for you. So over here on my far right is Dr. Jennifer Langan. She is a clinical veterinarian here at Brookfield Zoo and also a professor at the University of Illinois. To my right here is Joan Daniels, who is a curator of uh, mammals with the hoofstock and pachyderm animals. I'm Dr. Jennifer Watts. I am the director of nutrition here at the zoo. And then to my left here, we have Maggie Chardell, who is a lead keeper in the Wild Encounters Hamill Family Play Zoo and Animal Ambassadors. And you can see she has a little guest with us today. And so we'll start with Dr. Langan. Hi, uh, my name is Jen Langan. I'm a veterinarian here. I'm part of a, a team of a hospital staff that take care of the zoo 24 seven. And one of the things that folks have asked me is sort of how did I choose this career path and how did I get to be lucky enough to be a veterinarian here at Brookfield Zoo. Uh, veterinary school follows a, a four year undergraduate degree and it's similar to human medicine with uh, another four years of veterinary school where you develop a broad sense of medical understanding and then specialize from there very much just like our physician counterparts do. Um, so in that component of uh, my education, I really wanted to pursue zoo and wildlife medicine. Um, I've always had a strong interest in conservation and preserving natural habitats as well as populations. And that really drew me to this field. So I pursued a postgraduate residency program in zoo and wildlife animal medicine um, after veterinary school and was lucky enough to start here at Brookfield Zoo in 1999 and have been here for over two decades and been lucky enough to start our very own training program with a residency program, providing those who with the same interest and opportunity to follow in our footsteps. And as part of our care that we do every day, we provide routine medical care to the animals here at Brookfield Zoo, but we're also involved with field projects and conservation, and that really balances out uh, the opportunities that we um, have in sort of the conservation and veterinary careers. We get to work closely um, with all of the folks that Dr. Watts introduced here. So we enjoy working with people just as much with animals, which is a huge uh, advantage because there's just as many animal lovers here at Brookfield Zoo. Um, so we collaborate on a number of different conservation projects, whether they be with species that we house here or species that we support uh, for conservation purposes in the wild. We look for both medical advances as well as um, new understanding on how to help these species survive in human care as well as in the wild. Um, and all together, uh, working together with the animal care staff, we bring a tremendous amount of science excellence to the field to move the field forward. Uh, what would be your biggest piece of advice to somebody who wants to get into the veterinary field? Uh, so definitely it's something to try out. I definitely feel like uh, you need to sort of understand that um, we work through holidays and nights and there's not a nine to five component to our profession. So being able to um, endure some of those longer hours or still enjoy what you're doing through the duration of a, a long career is really impo important. I think loving what you do is probably the most important thing. So if you find yourself drawn to science, um, both loving working with people as well as animals, um, that's a really uh, sort of strong indicator of this might be some, of, some field that we, you would really enjoy. Thank you. Dr. Jen, it's so much fun working with you. I really <laughs> enjoy the I enjoy the collaboration of all the people that I work with. So I'm Joan Daniels, and I'm the curator of mammals. And I've been at Brookfield Zoo for a very long time. Um, I started out as an intern at Brookfield Zoo um, while I was in college, and then I worked my way up all the way to the curatorial staff over many, many years. Um, the first thing that uh, appealed to me about being a zookeeper was the hands-on direct animal care, which I was really excited about doing. So as my internship progressed, um, I really decided that instead of the veterinary career, like Dr. Langan um, went into, I decided I wanted to be a zookeeper, and I started to focus um, my career on that. Um, I did make sure that I had a strong biological background um, during my high school and college years. I um, attained a bachelor's degree in um, zoology, um, first of all from college, and that helped me to then qualify for an internship here at Brookfield Zoo. But because I was a city kid growing up in Chicago, I didn't have a lot of experience directly caring for animals, so I really had to work hard during my internships. And I spent a lot of time um, working with farm animals and horses, 
and then also my internship at the zoo here. And that really helped me get the hands-on experience that I needed. And it also um, solidified for me that I wanted to work with animals because just like Dr. Jen has said, um, it is a 24 seven um, commitment. You have to be here at odd hours of the day. The work is hard physically, so you have to be prepared for a lot of cleaning and feeding and diet prep. Um, when I started out in Children's Zoo, I was doing cow milking and all kinds of fun things like that, but it is very physically challenging. So the second half of my career then led me to go back to school, get a master's degree, um, and that helped me move up in the, to the curatorial ranks. And what curators do is that we help to oversee the collection. We're the people that help with the collaboration and make sure that we utilize all the resources we have here. So I work very closely with the veterinary staff, nutritionists, behavioral managers, and the keeper staff to make sure that we provide a well-rounded um, care for our animals here. So I oversee about 17 keepers. I help with their training, and I also make sure that they're um, able to get the resources that they need for their animals. And I get to see the animals at the best times generally. I get to see births and procedures and work with a really professional staff here at Brookfield Zoo. So I feel very um, lucky to have had my entire career here at the zoo. And I really encourage anybody who has an interest in science to pursue zookeeping. What are your favorite animals to work with? Whatever I'm working with that day is my favorite. <laughs> um, I love that answer because it is truly um, how I feel. I find every animal that I work with absolutely fascinating. And I do work with a pretty wide variety of animals, birds and reptiles all the way up to the large um, mammals as well. Hi, so I'm Dr. Jennifer Watts. I'm not the same kind of doctor as Dr. Langan. I have a PhD in nutrition, so that has helped me with um, coming here and becoming the director of nutrition. So I started out actually wanting to be a veterinarian. I loved animals. I was really good at biology and math and decided that that's what I was gonna do. The nice thing about going to college and getting into a zoology or an animal science department is then that then you get to see the breadth of what opportunities there are out there besides just just being a veterinarian. So it opened my eyes to some other opportunities. I found I really liked nutrition. And so I decided to pursue my graduate degree to get a PhD in nutrition. So I went to school for that. And then um, unfortunately, only about 10% of AZA accredited zoos have a graduate level nutritionist on staff. So there are very few jobs that were available at the time when I graduated. So I did some work for the USDA for a few years working in a lab. And then I was very lucky to get this job here at Brookfield Zoo. Um, I've been here now for 13 years. And as Dr. Jen said, we're very collaborative. We work together in all sorts of aspects of animal care to make sure we're providing the best care and welfare for our animals. So usually on a daily basis, I um, am reviewing diets, looking to make sure that we're doing the best that we can for our animals. I talk with the vets, I talk with the curators and the keepers, I get involved in all sorts of aspects uh, because nutrition is the basis of good health. So it really is important that our animals have the most ideal diets as possible. I also supervise the commissary, so I have five keepers there, so that is the actual action of preparing and delivering the diet. So all the logistics that go into that, we have to purchase all the food that these animals eat. So that's an important job as well. Have you ever worked with pandas? No, I have not worked with pandas. We have a red panda here, Leo, and he's very cute, but we have not, I have not worked with giant pandas, no. Maggie. Hi, I'm Maggie Chardell. I am a lead keeper in Wild Encounters, Animal Ambassadors, and Hamill Family Play Zoo. Um, I grew up with a really strong passion for animals. I had so many animals growing up, so um, I knew that I wanted to have a career with animals, um, whatever that led to, and it led me to working here at Brookfield Zoo. Um, I have an undergraduate degree in fisheries and wildlife, um, which I don't think a lot of zookeepers have. Most of us have a biology or zoology degree. But what led me to um, that degree was an opportunity to study abroad in Thailand and study um, tiger conservation. So that really inspired me to want to make a difference. Um, so I was lucky enough to get a seasonal position working in children's zoo um, a long time ago. And uh, I also did a few internships and pretty much tried to get my foot in the door 
at um, a few different zoos, and that led up to all sorts of different experiences that got me um, my full-time job 10 years ago, just in a few days. So <laughs> I've been here um, just 10 years. So being a lead keeper here um, in the ambassador department, um, I have a lot of different roles. One of my favorite things is helping new keepers um, grow and develop in their careers. But I find one of the most important things is connecting um, with the guests and connecting um, them with animals and inspiring conservation leadership. And what's the best part of your job? <laughs> um, I mean, definitely <laughs> hanging out with animals like Timo, our sloth, is, is a really fun, and but that's not the only thing that I do. Um, I care for all sorts of different kinds of animals, and I really miss having people here all the time um, because that is the most important part because it's not just holding on to Timo and feeding him and caring for him, but it's making sure that we connect people with the animals. And that's my favorite part. I, I like seeing people's faces light up when I take an animal out and teaching them and hopefully inspiring them to make a difference. Thank you. Um, so I have a question kind of for everybody. Um, we talked a lot about, or not we, you all talked a lot about your education and some of your background. Um, what advice would you have to young girls who are maybe still in junior high or high school? How can they, if they're interested in working in the zoo, what's some advice you would give to them? What can they do to kind of see if that's something they would want to do? That was a very rambling question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that um, make sure you focus on the sciences and math. Um, I loved biology. That was what I was really good at. I was not good at physics, um, but I did like the math and, and the science that went on when I was in junior high and high school. Um, getting experiences is a real um, benefit. So going to your local veterinary office or the wildlife rehab or the nature center and volunteering will help you get an idea of whether or not this is actually the path that you would like to take. Mm -hmm. Now, what if somebody doesn't necessarily want to work closely with animals, like many of you do? Maybe they have a lot of allergies or something like that. What other positions in the zoological fields um, can, can people participate in? Well, I could answer some of that. Um, there's a lot of sciences that um, help us take care of our animals here at Brookfield Zoo. So if you're not really interested in direct animal care, there's all kinds of different sciences around the science of taking care of animals and giving them good welfare and well-being. Um, we have a pathology staff here at Brookfield Zoo that we work with very care, um, closely that look at um, the causes of mortality in our animals and help us from a scientific point of view know what we need to do better with or just reassure us that we're doing the right things for our animals. We also have um, work with endocrinologists, and those are the people that look at hormone data on animals, and it helps us to understand if they are cycling normally with estrus patterns, looking at testosterone and estrogen, um, also helping us look at um, cortisol levels to see if animals have, are under stressors. And that is a lot of lab work, but it's all in collaboration with the scientists that work with us. So there's quite a bit of science behind the scenes that go on. Um, we also have a behavioral husbandry manager here at Brookfield Zoo who helps us um, structure training and behavioral and environmental enrichment for our animals. And a lot of zoos are now having specialists that work at just building behavioral enrichment for animals at a zoo setting. So there's all kinds of supportive ways um, of science uh, to, in the background that is happening other than the direct animal care. Now, all four of you have participated in some groundbreaking science um, achievements here at Brookfield Zoo. What's maybe your, your favorite story about you know, what you've helped with? That's a very difficult one because I think that uh, Joan Daniels, there's always a favorite every day that comes up. I think that's part of what drew us to the profession is that every day is just a little bit different. Um, uh, but there are numerous instances, I think, when we're able to, as a veterinarian, um, potentially turn an animal's life around based on a life-threatening presentation. That's always very rewarding, but it's just as equally rewarding to work with the animal care staff um, 
closely with an animal, for example, to acclimate them to a, a training situation. One thing that comes to mind specifically when I was pregnant with my first child, we also had a gorilla here that was pregnant at the same time. And we both learned to sit on a milk crate upside down until the point she became comfortable and let me do a voluntary neonatal ultrasound on her before she gave birth to her infant. Um, so there's interactions with the animals where we learn to provide medical care in a different way than most people might think veterinarians are caring for the animals here. But it's very rewarding to work with the animal care staff and the animals themselves to be able to provide groundbreaking um, care to the animals in our collection. So that's just one example of literally thousands that we do every day um, that's memorable and you know one that we hold with us for the rest of our careers, for example. Kind of piggybacking on like a medical care situation, um, we do a lot of training in our um, ambassador department and we uh, recently trained voluntary injections on our two servals and they received uh, their rabies vaccinations from the vet staff free contact. So that was really important. It took um, a, a lot of time and a lot of uh, training from the staff, but we have a really close connection with our animals and they were um, able to get their vaccinations stress free um, and it didn't require any mobilizations. So um, that was a really important um, step in our training. We're really proud of that. Um, as women in science, have you ever faced any challenges working in um, what is often a male-dominated field? The, the interesting thing is that um, there's actually been a shift in um, both veterinary and animal care um, gender roles. You know, in the past, it was very much a male-dominated field, but slowly over the last probably 20 years or so, it's really moved into a very female dominated field, uh, both in veterinary care and in zookeeping. Um, they like, we, we like to say that fe females and women are more in tune with behavior. We're a little bit more sensitive to those things. So we're better able to assess behaviors, small changes in animal behavior. And it's just, it's been a, actually a really great thing to see that um, women are getting more involved in the animal care field. Uh, let's do one more question. Um, what is it like working with snakes? <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It's fun. I love working with snakes. They're, um, uh, every snake is different, but uh, I think that they're really fun, and I think that they oftentimes get a bad rap, but um, they can be super friendly, and taking them out and breaking down the barriers with the guests is really important, and overcoming people's fears of them is, like I mentioned, one of the best parts of my job, <laughs> and connecting with people, so I really love working with snakes. They have great personalities, and um, they're really fun. And I have to say, they're really easy to feed because most of the time they just take <laughs> mice and rats. And so that's actually, they're not very uh, complex in my position. Okay, and from an animal management point of view, I've not worked directly with venomous snakes, but we do have venomous snakes here at Brookfield Zoo. And our reptile staff specializes in handling those uh, snakes in a very safe way. We have a lot of them on exhibit here at Brookfield Zoo, so come and see them in their natural habitats. and. They're wonderful to learn about. They're an important part of uh, the ecological systems throughout the world, um, and they're, they're just fascinating. And the reptile staff is always um, really happy to talk to people about snakes <laughs> so we can help people understand them more. I think, you know, what folks maybe don't get to see every day is the diversity, both not only in their physiology, but in their size and their behavior, um, just like different um, um, breeds of dogs. Snakes uh, portray enormously wide variety of different behaviors, anything from um, a very quietly sitting gaboon viper that waits for its prey to come to a very interactive, bright, very trainable cobra, for example. And these are species that in veterinary school never crossed my mind that I would feel comfortable or even have the opportunity to work with them. Um, but we are involved with um, conservation and rescue projects right here in the state of Illinois. We have an endangered uh, rat, pygmy, but sort of smaller rattlesnake um, that most people don't ever see. 
Um, so that's been a tremendous opportunity to be able to learn where those animals exist within our state and work closely with uh, field biologists to see exactly how they're using our urban habitats and hopefully conserve their natural ecosystems so they'll be with us here for a long, long time. Okay, well, thank you for joining us today as we celebrate women in science, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow.